What's up gamers, Zilix here, and today I just want to go over a few tips that I think are very important for beginners trying to get into Super 5. This isn't a video to try to cover every single thing I've learned about the game since playing the alpha testing, but this is a video to cover some of the most important things that I think will help you save some time, get higher levels, so that way you can get into combat if you want in the BR. The first thing we're going to cover is how to drop. So a random person is actually assigned the drop leader. That person has to select a spot that's inside that blue column to drop at. Otherwise, it won't let you drop. You can't drop onto the abyss. You have to drop onto a piece of land. Once the dropship circle overlaps where you're going, that's when you'll drop out. A few things to note while dropping are some of these vault icons, like this one that has an armor shield and the other one that's red. Because armor is very useful in the game, and sometimes some of the abilities that you can get out of these vaults are very useful too. But most importantly, you're going to want to look for these spots that have these purple circles because that's where you're going to get your XP and your items and you want to get to the soft cap before anybody else does before fighting. Especially in the lower levels because the more levels you have early on, the more abilities you're going to have unlocked. Which brings us to the next category, fighting mobs. Games like these are about saving time and doing things efficiently. And although there's different kinds of PvE, they all work about the same. You'll see where they have this blue ring around them. If you do an ability around them or hit them with an ability, it'll normally weaken them. Sometimes it causes them to be staggered and then they also take more damage for a set amount of time. A lot of these mobs also have a support, which is normally this green dude. And I always try to take him out first before he pops a bubble, which makes me waste more time to kill the group. And he also heals every unit nearby. So you really want to take him out, especially if you're trying to kill a giga boss. Just like the mini bosses, the epic bosses can be staggered too. You just watch for that blue ring. Now let's go to our third category, which is going to be about the base camps. Not only can you repair armor at these places while you're capturing them, or even upgrade your vibes to hyper vibes while you're capturing, these things you can heal at, and then you can also teleport back to later if you're getting chased down by a team and trying to reset. Just make sure your base isn't out in the storm. Oh, jeez. I don't know why I let you do that. Now let's talk about bushes. These things are super useful in game when you don't have a full team. Oh my god, he's level 10. So check bushes or make sure to use them. And the last thing I want to go over is gliding over the abyss, which is something you shouldn't do around enemies. Oh, knocked her out. Oh, and they got people back. Dang. Basically, if you have your glider out over the abyss and get tapped by anything, you drop straight to the ground. One way to avoid this is actually just to use dashes and don't pull your glider out or jump across if it's close enough, and then you'll jump up the ledge if you're close enough to the ledge. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to get to them as soon as I can. And then also, if you would like to play and you don't have a key, I actually have a ton of keys that I'm trying to give away. Uh, you can catch me live on Twitch whenever the game servers are up and I will be giving them away in there. Otherwise, have fun and frag out.